Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, April 24th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, guess who's supporting Al-Qaeda in Yemen? Then, the media circles wagons around Hillary, and gearheads weigh in on self-driving cars. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. No lights on, just run right up behind you with pleasure. Just, just, just get in there and then swing around and almost hit you. While Hillary Clinton could be called for a public hearing, once again, she's going to be in front of the special committee uh, in Congress that's investigating the 2012 Benghazi attacks. They have tentatively set this for the week of May 18th. And the Republican chair of that panel, Trey Gowdy, he is he's continuing to press this former secretary of state. He wants some answers. Uh, they don't believe that they've gotten all the information from Clinton and that obviously she hasn't turned over all the relevant documents. Um, they're going to be speaking with her, of course, about the Benghazi attack, as well as her email practices at the State Department. Uh, they release some sample questions. Gowdy wants everyone to know that he's going to—he's not going to be taking it easy on her. He's going to be asking the questions that no one in the media will ask her. You know, things like when and why did you set up a private email server? When did you, you know, think that that was going to be a good idea? Who did you communicate with? You know, what sort of entities outside of the State Department did you use this email for? And Democrats are, of course, all flustered because they say it's very convenient that the final Benghazi report is not going to be issued until sometime next year. Of course, that's going to be right in the heat of the presidential race. But seriously, what are they expecting to find out from Hillary when they roll her out for this charade once again? We've been hearing stories this week of the uh, Clinton Foundation uh, accepting donations in exchange for Russian control of a Wyoming uranium mine. The Clinton Foundation has announced that they're going to now have to refile five years worth of taxes. And also the Clintons denied that a meeting ever took place between uh, mining company investors in their house in Chappaqua. And that was until a reporter said, well, we actually have pictures, photos of you guys during that meeting. And they were like, oh, OK, yes, well, we did, in fact, meet with them. So that's what they're going to do. They're going to lie until you're able to produce some evidence to the contrary, which is, of course, why she deleted all of her emails. So they need to get the server. They don't need to parade her out because, so she can just lie once again in front of this public hearing. Now, obviously, what we've seen from the media is that they're not going to go after Hillary. Here, Gowdy's going to be the only one asking her about that email server. Nobody in the mainstream media has done that. And the way they've been treating her scandals thus far, I don't really think she has anything to worry about that. Here is Salon.com, which obviously we know they're super biased anyway there for the left. Uh, but rather than talk about any of Hillary's scandals, they're going to go after the GOP's pathetic money groveling. Why the Republican nomination will go to the highest bidder. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> that's just that's like par for the course when it comes to running someone, run a candidate running for president. But they're talking about how Ted Cruz is now cozying up to gay New York billionaires. Uh, this article says that, you know, a lot of these gay billionaires believe that the gay marriage thing is a done deal. So now they can go back to being conservatives uh, because that's sort of chic now, apparently, in this community. And then they're going uh, after... Marco Rubio, especially, they're saying that Sheldon Adelson is a big fan. And of course, uh, Adelson spent $100 million in the 2012 campaign. Um, but I mean, seriously, the Clinton campaign has projected a $2.5 billion campaign run. They're projecting they're going to spend $2.5 billion to get Hillary Clinton elected. That's double what Barack Obama spent. Now, she here is running on this platform of being for the people, and she's going to take down the 1% and even things out, even the playing field. But come on, it's the one percenters who are going to be donating billions to her campaign. And people on Twitter are wondering, you know, hey, Salon, has Marco Rubio made any uranium deals yet? No, I didn't think so. Probably not. If he had, I guarantee that would be all over the mainstream news. However, it is not, and Hillary... <laughs> 
has made these uranium deals, but that's, that's not news. What she's eating at Chipotle is news. Now, why is the media doing that? Because the Clintons, like the Bushes, they are an, a safe bet for billionaires like Sheldon Adelson. They know that if they get them elected, they're going to follow through on the campaign promises that they've made to the billionaires, not the campaign promises that they're making to all the rest of us, all the, the idiots that are going to vote solely with their vaginas out there, uh, thinking that Hillary's going to come along and change the status quo. Now, comedian Seth Meyers did a whole segment going on about the author of this book that's coming out that's causing a lot of these scandals to surface. Uh, he goes after the author of Clinton Cash, saying it's nothing but anti-Hillary bias. Now, Twitter, once again, just quickly pieced the puzzle together. That's what I love about Twitter. Um, just really showing why he would be specifically circling the wagons around Hillary Clinton. And there, it's because he hosted the Clinton Global Citizens Award last year. So they're saying, I wonder if his hosting fee included a little extra to kiss the Clintons' butts on late night TV. And people are pointing out that he was probably paid there with some of that uranium money. But that's just one person. I mean, you can turn on the television and see this bias. It's so obvious. Uh, but the big player in the game is the owner of Univision. Now, this is Haim Sabin, and he is the billionaire media mogul who owns the Spanish language U.S. TV channel Univision. And he is convinced that Hillary is going to win. Now, he donated more than 12000 to her Senate and presidential campaigns uh, between 99 and 2008, but donated between 10 and $25 million to the Clinton Foundation. So he is a big fan. And we can flash back to a story from last year where some people were starting to say, hey, wait a minute, has Univision, are they already giving uh, Hillary Clinton access to all of the viewers on this network? And she hasn't even announced that she's going to run. They say network gives Hillary Clinton direct access to Hispanic Americans. Is the largest Spanish language network boosting a likely candidate two years removed from the 2016 presidential election? It's certainly looking that way, and the media are turning a blind eye. And here, once again, this guy who is a billionaire media mogul who owns a Spanish language television station is coming right out and saying, it's not a matter of if, but when Hillary gets elected. And here he is obviously gonna be boosting her up uh, on one of the largest networks here in America. And it's huge because every month, 50,000 Hispanics turn 18. So that is a huge voting pool. And Univision is, is very important uh, in presidential elections when we have these elections are being increasingly influenced by Latino voters. Now, obviously, this would not fly if it was a Republican candidate being propped up this way. But we know we're, we're dealing with a very leftist media out there. I wish more people could realize that. Um, but of course, the mainstream media is too busy gearing up for their favorite week of the year. That's right, nerd prom, nerd prom. It's the White House Correspondents' Dinner. It's where presidential reporters get to rub elbows with all of the people that they're supposed to be holding accountable and partying with celebrities who literally do not know their names. They don't even know who they are. They say, oh, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not into politics. And then of course they get to parade themselves down the red carpet. And now we also know, because we <laughs> reported on this last week, that those very same celebrities probably don't get involved in politics because they're being vetted by the State Department uh, who wants to leverage their popularity in order to push the president's agenda. Now, none of those correspondents, I guarantee you, are going to sit Obama down and say, hey, why are you blocking access to the White House? You're supposed to be the most transparent president ever, the most transparent administration. I guarantee you not a single one of them is going to make a joke about that. Now, Politico of all outlets is pointing out that nerd prom is a huge mess. And one of the big issues they say at the dinner is that it's now more about business just as much as it is about journalism. And they point out how corporations control a majority of the tickets. There are advertisers, lobbyists, and business interests uh, in attendance at this dinner, sitting right beside the political reporters who are supposed to be holding them accountable 
reporting on their dealings, reporting about, you know, how they are connected with the administration. So the fourth estate is a total joke. It's becoming more transparent by the day. And this is just one big vanity party where the press gets to pat itself on the back for duping Americans once again into electing another evil authoritarian overlord. Good job, guys. Now, stick around. We got a couple reports coming up in the B Block, how the Obama administration and Saudis support al-Qaeda in Yemen. And then the University of Florida is going to be investigating some fraternity members who allegedly disrespected some wounded warriors. And then Joe Biggs and Rob Dew will be joining me in studio. We're going to review Call of Duty Black Ops 3. They have just released their latest trailer. My name is Alex Jones. Most of you know me from my syndicated radio program and my documentary films, as well as InfoWars Nightly News. When I got on air 20 years ago, I had discovered the globalist program, their plan to take over the world, and my focus went from running six miles every other day, swimming two, three miles a couple times a week, and lifting weights to focusing on fighting the globalist. I've gone from 279 pounds all the way down to 235 pounds and the weight's going off even faster. Super Male Vitality, Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, and Oxy Powder. Those three products of the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products are the most important from my own personal experience. And it wasn't just that my weight loss accelerated, my muscle mass increased, my stamina, my energy levels exploded. Now is the time to take action. Start your journey today with the Alex Challenge Pack. It's the trifecta of change. Secure yours today and get free shipping for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients. Tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. A Saudi prince promised to give pilots free, expensive luxury cars. Prince Al-Walid bin Talal is the Saudi king Abdullah's nephew. He has a $300 million stake in the social media company Twitter and is reportedly worth nearly $40 billion. To recognize the 100 participating Saudi pilots, I am pleased to present them with 100 Bentley cars, Bin Talal said in a tweet. The Saudi bombing campaign, dubbed Decisive Storm, commenced on March 26 against Shia Houthis. The United Nations expressed alarm six days into the bombing campaign as the civilian death toll climbed. The uh, res residents of the capital and many other uh, cities uh, are, 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 the, are the target of such uh, uh, continuation of uh, airstrikes. Also with the continuation of the aerial and sea ban, uh, there, there is a, a growing need for ba basic uh, medical equipment as well as the uh, f food, f uh, food accommodation. So we, uh, we are witnessing uh, alarming uh, humanitarian crisis in Yemen. Earlier this week, the Obama administration tried to limit the scope of the bombing campaign. Part of our goal as the world's leading superpower uh, is to work with partner countries uh, to try to resolve conflicts, to be ruthless in going after terrorism, uh, but we're not going to do that by ourselves and we're not going to do it just by deploying uh, more Marines in every country that has these problems. We've got to build up their capacity in these areas so that 
they're not recruiting centers and safe havens for terrorist activity. The U.S. has participated in the bombing that has created a humanitarian crisis by offering intelligence and logistical support. On Tuesday, the Saudis announced they would halt the month-long bombing. They said the campaign had achieved its objectives. That now appears to be a dirty Saudi trick, coaxing the residents of Yemen out of their homes to be pummeled by more Saudi airstrikes. <laughs> The strikes have so far wounded 3,311 and killed 951 people, 300 civilians, 134 of those were children. The Saudi Arabian elitist genocide campaign may seem like a world away, but according to the truth about the Saudi government and their involvement hidden in plain view in the full 9-11 commission report, that same psychopathic irresponsibility could potentially spark into a full-blown third world war in the Middle East. John Bound, Infowars.com. An opposite danger that public policy could itself become the captive of a scientific, technological, Elite. We're here at the Lone Star Roundup in Austin, Texas. This is their 14th year here. It's one of the biggest and best classic car shows in the country. All the cars here are 1963 or older. That means that they're at least 52 years old. You're going to see a lot of different changes here, but it's also a reflection of America's love of the car, the car culture, and what it brings to us, independence and freedom. So we're going to talk to some of the people here and see what they think about the near future where drivers are banned from the highway. Driving a car, it just there's something about driving a classic car with the windows down. Don't even have to have the radio on. You can hear the motor. It's just, you can't beat it. I'd get rid of uh, my wife almost before I'd get rid of some of my cars. <laughs> well, it's an original 1964 Don, uh, Woody Gilmore car out of California. From this little on, I've been, you know, taking motors apart, taking Volkswagen apart when I was like eight years old, you know, so. It, you know, it's just almost a lifestyle. You just, I wouldn't know what to do without cars. I've been messing with them ever since I was 14 years old. The only thing that's not original is the motor and the body panel, but it is an original 1963 top fuel car. That's, that's a beautiful car. Well, it's, a, it's Tweety Bird. It was gone for 50 years, and he sold it to pay for his first child being born in 1962. And we were at a swap meet and a guy answered his cell phone and says, we need to move the Model A out of the garage in Tweedy. And I go, oh my gosh. So I tapped him on the shoulder and I said, you, Tweedy doesn't happen to be a yellow 32, does it? And he goes, yes. The guy says, I own your car. You ever seen this? Google self-driving car. Yeah. Okay. yeah, no steering wheel, no brakes. Would you want to ride in that car? No, I, I gotta have some control over what I'm in. Google, Google self-driving right, car? Right, yeah, I saw what? it in no, no steering wheel, no, no brakes. brakes. Yeah, that's scary. I spent 30, 33 years in the United States Air Force, so, you know, I'm familiar with all the navigation uh, systems. And, uh, cause I've been in places with GPS that took me in the wrong direction. How's that computer going to react when a deer jumps out in front of you or something falls out of the sky and you can see it coming down? Maybe it's out of its range. Have you seen the Google car that has no steering wheel and no brakes? Yes, yeah, see, I looked at that last week, actually. How would you feel to get in a car like that? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I guess it's, I wouldn't really, uh, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable at all. Uh, what do you think about uh, autonomous driving cars, and the cars where you don't have a steering wheel or brakes? So they're, they're talking about uh, using that extensively. I think I may see it when I'm an old man, maybe, but... I, I still think the humans are going to be driving them, and the humans are going to be in control of them for, I know, the rest of my life now. <laughs> do you think that they will be in uh, driving initially on, uh, eventually on the road? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if eventually, but I, I don't see it anytime soon in our lifetime, or at least not in uh, as long as I'm driving. Hopefully it's, it's after my lifetime or our lifetime, but I, my personal opinion, I don't see it happening anytime soon. Ford, I think, has uh, just put out a, uh, a thing that will keep you from speeding, so it'll basically break your car if you go uh, above the speed limit, it'll slow you down. I don't like it, but I don't drive Fords either, so. Autonomous driving cars, are the government tracking every mile that we drive and taxing us on every mile that we drive? How do you feel about that? I do not like it. Okay, they're charging, everywhere's turning into a toll road, right? Yeah. 
and they got the, the easy tag, how long is it gonna be before they go, okay, you went through toll number three at this time, and you went through toll number four at this time, well, you went 90 miles an hour from here to there, and they're gonna send you a ticket in the mail. They're putting black boxes in all of the new cars, They'll probably retrofit it back to uh, any of the cars that are on the, on the street. Uh, that's going to measure how fast you accelerate, how fast you corner. They're going to give that information to the insurance companies. What do you think about that and the government? Uh, I don't like that. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have one on my car. The human factor needs to be there. You, you can't have everything computerized. The CEO of Uber has said that once they get self-driving cars, once they get autonomous driving cars, car ownership will go away. That's their goal. What do you think about that? They're going to have a hard time with that, I think. I mean, people, I think a lot of people are getting fed up with the infringement on our freedoms, with the spying and all this kind of stuff, you know? It's like, why are you spying on us, listening to my phone call and all that, and you're going to tell me I can't drive my car and I'm not going to have the freedom to go where I want to go? No way. It'll be a fight then. Well, I've talked to a lot of people here at the Lone Star Roundup. Everybody believes that there's a future where we're not going to be able to drive cars. Everybody believes that the future is going to have less freedom. Nobody believes that it's going to happen in the next five to ten years. Even the young people don't think that it'll happen within their lifetime. We have to wake up to how rapidly things are changing and understand that unless we take steps, it will happen, and it will happen sooner than anybody thinks. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. InfoWars Life and InfoWarsLife.com is extremely excited to announce our latest release, Winter Sun, a revolutionary type of vitamin D3. Winter Sun is a premium quality vitamin D3 nutritional supplement. It is produced by extracting oil from healthy, nutrient-dense plants known as lichens. Every batch is analyzed for purity and D3 content. It's completely free of toxins and allergens. Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. ourselves they are using to literally turn humans into weapons the notion that the United States sponsors some sort of super soldier program is not just untrue it's patently absurd next question neural control voluntary limb replacement this is happening the only question that remains is how far will we allow it to go
Well, that was just a part of the teaser trailer for the official Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Ember that is set to release April 26th. Uh, the tagline for this is that in the next 50 years, technological advancements will lead us into a world where only those who risk going too far will find out how far we can actually go. Now, joining me in studio, Rob Dew and Joe Biggs. We're going to give our review of the trailer. So, Dew, what do you think? Is this predictive programming or, I mean, is this already here? Well, I think it was an amazing piece of editing. As an editor, I was kind of blown away by it. And yes, I do think it's a piece of predictive programming. And we ran an article back in 2010. And I just want to read this definition of predictive programming from Alan Watt. Things or ideas which would otherwise be seen as bizarre, vulgar, undesirable, or impossible are inserted into films slash video games, you could put right there, in the realm of fantasy. When the viewer watches these films, slash plays these games, his or her mind is left open to suggest, and the conditioning process begins. These same movies, which are designed to program the average person, can give the discerning viewer a better understanding of the workings and the plan of the world agenda. It's from Alan Watt. And yeah, I think you're seeing a lot of that predictive programming stuff. And it starts off as, you know, great things. We've got working bionic legs. We've got eye implants that can help the blind people see, cochlear implants to help people hear. But then where does it go too far? I mean, there's some people that are saying that the, um, the next person, the person who's immortal has already been born. Yeah, So, right. you know, when does that go too far? What I think is interesting, though, in this trailer teaser, they always, the people who are questioning things are like religious zealots are mobs of crazy people. Right. It's never a scientist going, well, you know, maybe this, maybe we should think about what we're doing. Yeah, which in, in today's reality, it is actually scientists and people like Elon Musk and F Future of Life Institute having all these uh, people working in the field of AI signing on to say, hey, let's let's make sure that we go, go ahead with this, uh, with ethical thoughts, you know, moving ahead with this. So Biggs, what do you think? Would you be for or against super soldiers? Well, this is the thing. If it gets to a point where the government has built this huge army of super soldiers who are like cyborgs, half human, half that, we're gonna get dominated and someone's gonna have to step up and volunteer to get cyborged up and I'll be willing to do it. So like a good Terminator? <laughs> yeah, I'll be a good Terminator. Terminator. I'm gonna not have to go back in time because tyranny's already here and I'll be, uh, but do, you, do you think they're going to let you maintain your humanity, though? Don't you think that they're going to say you're going to be implanted with all of this? Well, it's just like Robo, Robocop was able to fight all the program that he had, and the realness came out in him, and he became good. And that's what's going to happen with me. There's but the stormtroopers couldn't withstand Order 66. They just went and slaughtered all the Jedi. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> these guys have Jedi mind tricks. I don't have that. And neither do we. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, it, all in all, I'm going to go get the game because I want to play it and see what it's all about. It, it's always interesting. So, yeah, I mean, I really do think there is predictive programming in these games. I mean, I remember being a kid playing the original Call of Duties, you know, in World War One and Two and all that, where you're running around and thinking like, oh, my God, I want to go fight for my country. I want to go do that. And sure enough, I jumped in and signed up and joined the military. And it's nowhere near as cool as these video games make it to be. Right. It's uh, completely wrecks and ruins your life. Uh, you know, then you get put it's on a lot hotter drugs. than video games. Yeah, it's a lot hotter. <laughs> it's very tiring. You know, you don't have to carry uh, equipment and rucksacks when you're playing video games. But I mean, I do think that that works on children to help promote that whole join the military, right. sacrifice yourself. And then when you get out there, you find out that you're not really fighting for your country anymore and the people. You're fighting for these bankers and these people who want to dominate the globe. So it's it's definitely something that you know, just kind of throws you out there. Well, it, and you can't start over with extra lives or anything like that. You only get this right, one once life. Right, you die, that's it. But, it. but is it predictive programming, or are they just playing on reality? Because a lot of that technology is already here. We're hearing a head transplant is taking place here soon. And yep. I also thought it was pretty interesting that there were no robots. It was all humans that were just upgraded. Yeah, it shows that they had no arms or legs when they had the thermals on. You could just see the chest and the head. That was the only thing that picked up on the heat sensor. And the rest of the body was just, you know, mechanized. Mm -hmm. Well, and we could just look at a few articles that just came out recently. Uh, here's one that just came out uh, April 6th. Former Winnipegger says bionic leg, almost like the real thing. Huh. And in there it shows, uh, in, in that trailer, it shows uh, this female runner winning the gold medal. We saw Oscar Pastorius, the Blade Runner. Yeah. Right, yeah, um, that's... You know, but maybe maybe all that fame and stuff, be having the bionic legs, it seems it probably went to his head and ended up, you know... Uh, going after his girlfriend, shooting. Yeah. So. Well, a lot of people are so against that. Currently, they're saying, well, that's not fair. You know, that has a propulsion mechanism. And right. 
it brings them beyond what a human is capable of doing, and they're saying, well, no, I'm a human, th these are my legs. So there's that. There, right now we're having those ethical arguments, but here they're saying in 50 years, we won't be those people are going to be winning the gold there. medals. And I mean, well, right now you have the, the whole ethical situation, you know, should we allow scientists to play God? You know, you know, are you one of those people who believes that everything happens for a reason? And if so, if you lost your leg, you just need to deal with it. I've got buddies here in the military who have missing legs and things like that. It hasn't slowed them down. They, they've gotten up. They still work out. They're in shape. And they don't let it get them down. I mean, are they no interested reason. in bionic implants or extra limbs? I mean, uh, like my buddy uh, Nate actually has uh, one of the little uh, uh, like the three uh, D yeah, the little thing the part on the leg or whatever. Yeah, and I mean, he uses it from time to time. But I mean, losing his leg never slowed him down. I think once you do that, it's gonna you're kind of playing the realm of God, and I just think that's a little. Well, we out are, there and weird. as humans, we are very adaptable. But the, I mean, with 3D printing, all that stuff is gonna be easily accessible. I mean, they 3D printed a, a foot for a baby duck so that the duck could swim again. So I mean, and that's just an animal. Now, of course, the things that they can do with humans. Um, but let's look at some of these other. Well, I wanna go back to the predictive programming angle. Um, they say the average gamer is about 30. Um, the biggest game of 2012 was Call of Duty 2. But I found a, a guy who's a Call of Duty guy, he, he put out a, a, a survey and said, what's your average age? And he got 500 responses back. His average age was 18 that he got. And so you're looking at, so half the people are under 18, half the people are over 18. So you've got a whole mass of people playing this game mm -hmm. who are ripe for getting programmed. Right. And then they're, they're, these are people about to go to college and they're gonna go out in the workforce and they're gonna be the next generation of leaders, which when you're watching this trailer, it's set at the end, uh, what, 2065, when we see this uh, whistleblower who's talking about the military technology being ahead. And, and so that's an interesting thing. How, how far ahead is military technology? Right. And I found on a message board, it was interesting, uh, this guy who happens to be a Navy SEAL says it's only about 12 to 18 months ahead, yeah. which I think is ridiculous. Uh, they have giant lasers that they shoot through holes of ships and right. stuff like that. They're talking about handheld ray guns. We're yeah. never going to see this stuff in, in, in 100 years, I don't exactly. think, for They're the local gonna, consumer. Well, we see they have these conventions where they will start trickling down that military technology to local law enforcement. You know, they have, they're have like, hey, come by this sound cannon, and you can penetrate any protests and make people vomit instantaneously or c cause paralysis or, you know, burning in their in their... Uh, bones and stuff. I'm but glad it's, they it's didn't only, have that it's only momentarily. And, and you're thinking, what in the world? And there's showing this off to law enforcement, you know, to be able to use their military technology. But of course, it goes beyond that because initially they're they're trying to figure out how to use this uh, in war. That's in what war. it always is. And, you know, war does lead a lot of technology. It creates a lot of technology. Not that I'm saying war is good and we should have it. I think it's horrible. But it does uh, instigate a lot of investment into the, those yeah. areas. So now we got a bunch of wounded warriors coming back. Well, now there's technology into helping those people walk, helping them grab things. Um, you know, so you're having all those types of advances. But yeah, like you were saying, the the, the Dr. Frankenstein is what they're calling him. He he's going to take this guy's head, who, who is basically really disabled. He's in a wheelchair. Yeah, he, and, I mean, but he has like you know, his, he's got his all of his cognitive abilities. Yeah. So right. they're going to transplant. He says he can do it in under an hour. Make the transplant wow. happen. Then there's more stuff that has to happen after that, but like getting the head off of one onto the other. And who's the donor body? So it's someone that's obviously. It's a guy in Russia. Really it'll be interesting to see if the body rejects it or not. Yeah, we'll see if something like well, that actually happens. I believe happens. the person who's going to, he's. Yeah, Valerie, if you scroll up a little bit, you'll see the guy. Anyway, um, so. Scroll, his name's uh, Valerie Spinirdov. He's a Russian, he's in a wheelchair. I mean, you know, obviously his body is not, you know, what he would want it to be. He's been served, uh, you know, he, has, he didn't get the best of luck when um, bodies were being dished out, but he suffers from Wardig Hoffman disease, which is some kind of degeneration of the body. Right, and I think that, that they're not predicted to live much longer with a disease like that anyway. Right. So here he's saying, well, I might as well, might as well do it. give it a whirl. And he yeah. says he's scared. He's like, I don't know what's going to happen, but there's a chance that it may be great. And, you know, in that instance, he's a pioneer. You know, people didn't know what, were, what was going to happen when you went out into space. There's all those different realms, you know, of, of exploration that when mm -hmm. the first person, you got a 50-50 chance, life or death, you know, that's what right. it is. But, you know, now scientists, it just came out today, scientists fully decode a pair of mammoth DNA genomes. Right. <laughs> I mean, 
they're getting ready to play God. They're getting ready to bring back the woolly Jurassic mammoth. Park. Yeah, yeah well, it's going to so, happen. I mean, so they're allowing a lot of the elephants to be completely annihilated. They're about extinct, and so, so they're going to bring back the woolly mammoth. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the, purpose it's going to serve. Really? <laughs> and well, you know, and a lot of people say, well, there's we're we're killing a lot of these species now. They're saying we're actually finding more species now than ever before, and that there's more species that have ever lived on the earth now than than have ever lived. They say it's life is everywhere and it's happening. Mm. So these doomsdayers, you know, that are putting out games like this that are, you know, it's got a very negative approach on technology. And in this sentence here in the beginning, mankind's greatest mistake will be its inability to control the technology it has created. I, I would say that we're not given the ability to control this technology. We are being forced an agenda of the technology. And that's the secret, I think, behind this game that is going to come out, that there's an agenda behind this that it's not... It's not regular people getting to make the the decisions of how it's yeah. going to be sky. Well, the technology yeah. we get is like, oh, here you can have this, so you can do some social networking with your friends, right. or it takes. While we're of sucking yourself. in all the data. And yeah, exactly. Using we're it against gonna use, you. I mean, just think the the military just came out and said most of the UFO sightings people s saw way back in the day was actually just us, mm -hmm. and it was the technology that they were using that we didn't have any, we weren't privy to what they were actually doing out there. And Alex said it today. He said, technology is neutral. It was either Alex or David. Uh, one of them said that today. Uh, technology is neutral. And it's how we use it, how we choose to use it. And mm -hmm. it's, our, it's our job and duty as humans to make sure that we check ourselves, that we don't just go, hey, do whatever you want, that we do have these checks and balances to go, how far do we go? Do we start, right. once we start cloning people, is, does that person get a constitution? What yeah. happens there? I mean, what are all the implications of that? And that's what it gets into these weird worlds mm -hmm. that, you know, they had these, when you were in grade school, remember they said, well, you're in a rowboat and you got to kill a couple people who didn't kill. <laughs> you know, they're always trying to justify killing people off in these yeah. different mind games that they play. And I think this is just another way, like who gets to be immortal? Right. How, you know, are you going to get to be immortal? What What are you What are you doing for humanity? You know, that's yeah. Yeah. that's you what it's going to be. It's going to be a test. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're the ones who are going to be fighting against this, so I doubt we get to be immortal. <laughs> and <laughs> so, uh, one of the big themes in that on, along that line is that there seems to be, and Ray Kurzweil actually predicted this, that there would be sort of a branching off of humanity, where some people would be upgraded and then others would not. Yeah. And they'd be like a lower class. Yeah, you'll either live in cyborg stan or hippie topia. That's that's gonna be your, yeah. your two areas of, of you know, are you gonna augment your body and join the Borg? Uh, because you know, even now they're they're putting these chips into people. There was a video clip which I think, you know, maybe we could play this in a second where this lady's getting the chip in her hand to like open doors yeah, and use the copy so machine. And she goes, Oh, it makes it feel so modern and <laughs> so two thousand and fifteen. I mean it was just like, a microchip about the size of a grain of rice is injected into her hand. Uh, it felt pretty scary, but at the same time it feel, felt very modern, very 2015. Instead of ID cards or passcodes, workers who sign up for the implant can now open doors with the wave of a hand. Yeah, and that's you the know? thing is they're going to start this whole programming to, to make people look down Oh yeah, on people, people who, who don't get who the don't chip. want to upgrade. I mean, every time I go to the gym and yeah. the person at the gym has to check me in well, look, they, manually, I mean, they, they're you like, the barcode on the arm. Are you yeah. sure you don't want to just use your thumbprint? And I'm like, uh, I'm the reason why you're still here having a job is because yeah, they don't they don't see that like the job that you hate so much that you're getting paid to do. Right. You know that'll be obsolete, and you know when they have the robot reception. Yeah. And, and IBM has already implemented the Watson program at the Austin VA to yeah. help mm -hmm. take care of veterans. You know, I mean, it's just, it's it's out of this world. People are scared to take any kind of responsibility for something if they can put well, it on a robot. And going back to that, Australia has just said now everybody's going to have to mandatory take vaccines. Anything that we say, you have to take just because we say it, you know. Oh, we have a vaccine for height. We have a vaccine for baldness. You know, we're just yeah, going to start a injecting caller today on the Alex Jones show actually made that point is, is once, they, once they get to this mandatory vaccination, where do they stop with yeah. that? If they say, oh, well, you... Well, you got to get the chip. Everybody's getting. You it. have a personality disorder, so mm -hmm. here's this vaccine for that, and it's a private company's product. I mean, you got the movie Out of Time. You got the RoboCop mm -hmm. out. I mean, all this stuff is leading. All into predictive programming. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So, Call of Duty, official Call of Duty, Black Ops Three. I know you're planning on purchasing it, so obviously we'll be doing uh, another review once you actually get to play the game. So, how does this work? Are you going to choose to to play as a normal? person or as a super soldier? I mean, it's however they have the storyline put out. I mean, it's it's different. Each game varies. Um, some games you get to be like the bad guy. Some games you get to be a cop. 
um, this. Uh, I'm not sure. They haven't released a uh, storyline yet on what it's going to be like, but it'll be interesting, and then we'll have a report out about it as soon as it happens. It'll so. definitely be in the future. It looks like it's going to be yeah. based in the future, and, or maybe it'll lead. Maybe it'll take you through that journey. Of because going some of the other games have been soldiers inside these uh, robot type suits, and this seems like now it's the transition of you're no longer in a suit. You are you are the, the robot. machine. You are yeah. the robot. You will be the weapon that will go out and fight wars. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting if it if it allows you to kind of go through some of those ethical decisions so you can... S I doubt it. ...sort of see how those ethical decisions are going to come up in life. I am a robot. I am here to help. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Crush the humans. <laughs> Ugh. Thank you, guys. And I wanted to give a shout-out to uh, one of our fans on Twitter that suggested we do a review Oh, yeah, of put this. his tweet up, right? We'll, and we'll even say his name. I know Jakari and, and Joe Biggs. Ruben be, Harper. Yes, thank you, Ruben. Uh, they'll be giving you the official Call of Duty Black Ops 3 review when that hits stores April 26th. Well, thank you all for tuning into the show tonight, and we will see you here again Monday, 7 p.m. Central. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. When it comes to you and your family's health, InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality Silver Bullet from InfoWarsLife.com and to help others during Christmas by teaching them about the powerful benefits of silver. Secure your Silver Bullet Bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Dan Bedanti for InfoWars.com. We are in Lexington, Massachusetts, where 240 years ago, the first shot was fired right here on the green to start the American Revolution because the British wanted our guns and they wanted to oppose taxes, much like we're facing today. So we're going to ask the general public their thoughts if we are facing the same oppression as we did 240 years ago. Who was famous for one in Lexington that the British were coming? Who was famous? Well, of course, Paul Revere. Why, well, letting everybody know that they were indeed on the march. What happened here in Lexington on April 19, 1775? Approximately 77 militia confronted the British regulars as they moved through town on their way to Concord. Do you know who Captain John Parker was? Captain John Parker was the commander of the, um, the Lexington militia. Do you know why we went to war with the British? We went to war with the British, well, for a combination of reasons. One was for representation, no taxes, and also to be an independent country. Do you feel that our civil liberties are once again under attack and that we are facing similar oppression as we did 240 years ago, and by who? I do think so, and I think it's more internal right now. I think 230 years ago you could consider it internal as we are now with uh, Homeland Security. And do you feel that our civil liberties are under attack again and that we're facing similar oppression as we did 240 years ago and by who? My mother always told me not to talk about religion or politics. <laughs> According to Homeland Security, they are now listing return of veterans as a threat to our country. Do you agree or disagree with that and why? I do not actually. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you have the aberrations of a, a couple, you know, veterans that, you know, had issues here and there, but I mean, you look at it, they fought for our country. Well, Dan, I think, let me ponder this one. I think actually um, that the part that makes America America is believing that anyone could be a threat, actually. I don't understand how a returning veteran could be a threat to our country. I think we owe them more than we could ever give them. Are you aware that Homeland Security is purchasing billions of rounds of ammo, including hollow point bullets, and they say it's for training? Does that concern you at all? It would concern me. I didn't know it, but absolutely. You know, uh, this is the first time I've heard about that, so I would have to do some background checking on that, but uh, no comment. 
Would you feel comfortable if the military was to patrol the streets with tanks, automatic weapons, set up unconstitutional checkpoints, and police your town? Of course not. That, that, uh, that uh, leads to what I was saying earlier. The government is trying to control more and more and more, and it's getting it's scary because uh, the cameras are everywhere. The Boston Marathon got cameras, and that's in one respect that's good. But on the other hand, Big Daddy is watching everything you do. Absolutely not. It's the, it's the exact opposite of why we're here today, sure. Are you aware that Homeland Security is buying billions of rounds of ammunition, including hollow point bullets? They say it's for training. Does that concern you at all? Um, I was not aware, and uh, it is quite concerning. Uh, significantly, if there's no reason for them to have hollow point bullets, there's no threat. We declare war on terrorism and spend trillions of dollars on the war on terror. Do you feel more safe or less safe than pre-9-11? Um, well, uh, it's, it's a hard question. Um, I feel safer because I know that they're watching now in, the way, in ways they weren't thinking about before. But then again, as we know from the Boston Marathon, you can't really know what's going to happen by whom at any time. I f probably feel just as safe as I did then. Yeah. I look a little bit more to see if backpacks are on the ground or my who might be around me, but I guess I'm more aware. But, you know, Europe's been living that way for a very long time. So I go about my business daily as anybody else. And I'm standing right next to a legit relative of Captain John Parker. And how are you doing, sir? I'm doing excellent. All things considered, I marched for uh, Sudbury Militia this uh, this morning, starting at uh, 6 a.m. down at Sudbury Center. We marched the Old North uh, Bridge and fired three volleys uh, in honor of uh, of the founders of uh, Sudbury and my relatives over there, uh, David Howe and David Howe Jr. And now I'm over here at Lexington uh, trying to honor my uh, Parker relatives. We're standing right in front of uh, the Minuteman Tavern, uh, Buck Buckman's Tavern, Buckman's uh, exactly where uh, this was conspired to say, hey, you know what, the British are coming, let's defend this uh, land here. Oh, yeah, yeah, they had gathered around here uh, early in the morning, probably uh, 2 a.m., uh, because uh, they had been warned uh, by Revere and Dawes, and they had told uh, um, Sam Adams and John Hancock, who were up at the at the Clark Hancock house, uh, to get out of town. Uh, they thought they'd be coming right away, so a lot of these guys dispersed, and then they had to come back. So they came back probably uh, 4:30, 5 o'clock. They had 77. Uh, Patriot Militia uh, against uh, a force of uh, 700 uh, from the King's uh, troops. They swore an oath uh, to defend uh, home and family against all tyrants and, you know, intruders, whatever. So uh, that's probably where they get shot in the back, you know, with, they're not going to drop their, their, uh, their firearms. They really wanted to take the guns uh, out of uh, Concord. That was their ultimate goal. I mean, they had been spying and learned about the committees of safety, and they had, they knew what was out there uh, through this this act. Do you see this going on today? Very similar things that we faced back uh, 240 years ago. Do uh, you see that we're facing the, almost the same stuff now today? Yeah, this is this is a definite attack on uh, our liberties uh, involved in. Uh, you know, spying on us, uh, kind of like what they were doing back then. Uh, crazy, you know, if you, you're speaking for the Constitution, uh, you're thought of as, uh, you know, not not too highly. And is there a great feeling to know yes. that your, your cousin or uh, uncle, whoever he is, yeah, cousin, stood yeah. against tyranny? Yeah, definitely, for sure. Because uh, I'm glad that my, you know, my parents taught me about this whole thing that I was tied And I really didn't, you know, back in, years ago in the 70s and 80s I, I said yeah that's a wonderful story but now I, I see and feel it I'm like uh, yeah stand your ground means a, you know a lot yeah I had been recorded those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it and obviously you know history and all that but what the mainstream media is doing is they're erasing history and do you fear that hopefully it doesn't happen to happen someday but do you fear our history would have to repeat it someday uh, I sure as hell hope not Unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is what we fought for in 1775. Here in 2015, those same rights are being trampled on once again. As Paul Revere warned, the British are coming. The British are coming. Today, we must follow his lead to warn that the New World Order is coming. 
the new world order is coming. And assemble today's Captain John Park is to once again stand our ground against tyranny and oppression. Dan Bedondi, Infowars.com. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.